Rothmann. こんにちは、えー、とダイナミックオーディオの佐藤です、えー。今回はブロッドマン、スピーカーブランドのブロッドマンのベルンさんとズームインタビューでつながっております。<laughs> Thank you very much for the interview. Konnichiwa from my side.、Um, my name is Bert, as you said.、Um, I, I live in Austria. I'm right here in, in Vienna. This is where our home base is. Vienna, as you know, is the city of music, as we call it in Europe. Yeah, in the historical meaning. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is. All the, all the famous composers lived here. Beethoven lived here, Schubert, Mozart, all of them. So you can name a lot.、Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I originally was born in,、uh, in Salzburg, so Mozart's hometown. Oh. Yeah. Did you?、Uh, that's... No, I never met him. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe you can feel the spirit of the. Yes. Mm. Absolutely, yes, because、uh, Mozart in Salzburg is, is everywhere.、Mm. And there is the big, big festival in the summer festival、uh, where they play a lot of, of classical music.、Mm -hmm. um, and、uh, that's always strongly related to Mozart. That's the history of the city, clearly.、Mm. So, Brotman, do you have a question for the question? Yes. Broadman is a, is a loudspeaker company and、um, also a piano company. In 1796, so more than 200 years back, Mr. Broadman, as we pronounce it in, in Austria, Mr. Broadman, he came from Germany.、Uh, he was a very, very experienced piano builder and he moved to Vienna. Why? Because here in Vienna was the center. Uh, you have to imagine in this time, Vienna was one of the three biggest cities in the world. Mm, mm, mm. So at that time, Vienna was really a big city, and、uh, the emperor lived here. And so all the, the music and the money was here. The music was here because of the money,、mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the, the composers could make their money here. So Mr. Broadman moved to Vienna because he wanted to participate in that. Mm -hmm. And if you imagine in, in 1796, there was no TV, there was no Facebook, there was no nothing. So, what people did when they met at home, they played music. So, families were playing music. It was a, a strong tradition to have family music. So, it was very, very common to have a piano at home, smaller ones, bigger ones. At that time, In Vienna, there were more than 200 piano manufacturers. 200. 200, yeah. And so today we have two or three here. Oh. Now, Broadman,、uh, Mr. Broadman was one of the very good ones.、Mm -hmm. So he, his, his pianos were known to be of utmost standards. And That's why Mr. Beethoven bought a Broadman piano. So, Mr. Beethoven at home, in his home, which is this direction、mm. <laughs> in Vienna, <laughs> not far away from here, maybe,、um, maybe straight line distance, 10 kilometers. Just a few kilometers.、Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a, that a little village. Mr. Beethoven lived a little bit outside in a, in a, in a house. He had his Broadman piano up there. And you can read evidence, and I, I, I researched it myself. So you can read evidence that,、uh, that people said Mr. Beethoven used to play、uh, family afternoons where they gathered for music, and Mr. Beethoven played on his Broadman piano. So that's what the history tells us. でそのピアノブランドがどうしてスピーカーブランドになっていったかみたいなことですね。OK、the, the,、um, there is a, since between 796 and, and 2023, there's a big gap.、Uh, a few people from the other famous、uh, 
piano manufacturer here in Vienna, Mr. Bösendorfer, or Bösendorfer Company. You heard of that. The, the story is, or the history is, Mr. Bösendorfer was the young apprentice of Mr. Broadman. So he learned all his knowledge from Mr. Broadman in the past. So the, the Bösendorfer name stayed in the history. Uh, in 2004, a few people from Bösendorfer decided to start uh, a new piano company with very high quality piano at a, at a useful price, because as you know, Bösendorfer is very expensive. And uh, the, the, these people took the name Broadman because of the history and because they were coming from Bösendorfer, they were allowed to do that. Um, and uh, later on, as you know, Bösendorfer was sold to Yamaha and they did not want to go on with the loudspeakers. <laughs> and so the, 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 the Broadman people um, decided to take over the license from Mr. Deutsch. So as you know, the, the name Hans Deutsch, Hans Deutsch is the famous designer. Hans Deutsch is really a famous person in, in design. You can find his inventions in textbooks. And therefore, um, that's just one sentence uh, that we might explain later. But I truly believe and uh, that our speakers has, have the most out-of-the-box solutions to any other speakers. So really different approaches, but with a wonderful result. Um, I have to tell you my story, why I am so addicted to that. Um, and I'm addicted mm -hmm. with Wi-Fi <laughs> since my age of, uh, of 18. We have we have same sickness <laughs> addiction. <laughs> okay. uh, at the age of 18, I earned my first money. I was a student. I worked in the summertime, got money, and I wanted to invest it in my first stereo equipment. At that time, I bought an Onkyo amplifier, so oh, Japanese God. product. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they had very good product at the price level I could afford. Um, I went through many, many shops. I went into one shop and there were the, the brands that were typically in Europe, like Magnat, Heco, Infinity, all these brands. We were talking about 1981. Mm -hmm. And so now you know how old I am. Um, and then I, I got into one shop and I play, switched with the buttons at that time there was no remote uh, you switch between the, the different speakers and suddenly I switched to a speaker and that was a whole different level of of music unbelievable and you cannot believe I, I had goosebumps all over and the, the music was so touching so unbelievably beautiful so I asked the owner of the shop what is this? And he said to me, you have a problem now. And I said, why? And he said, uh, because this is Hans Deutsch and you are spoiled now. You will never like anything else, but uh, you cannot afford it. It's too expensive for you. <laughs> that this is your problem. And so I said, okay, but I need to solve the problem. Mm. And uh, so he gave me the telephone number of Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Deutsch lives near Salzburg, just 10 kilometers outside. So I phoned up Mr. Deutsch and said, I heard your speakers, I'm totally in love um, and I need, I need something. And he said, come visit me at home. I'll sell you a pair privately. So that's how, my, how the story started. What I'm saying is I never heard the name Deutsch. I have never heard read any reviews or anything. I went to the shop. I had no bias, no expectations. I just turned on and trusted my ears. And the experience was, uh, for me, life-changing. And I really mean life-changing. So while I studied, I'm a physicist, so I studied physics. I worked together with Hans Deutsch, but then I started my own company and, um, I had my own consulting company working as a physicist. And, and in 2004, five, six, we got, uh, we got together again. And to make a long story short, I got into the company. I built up the speaker production for Broadman. I stayed in the company. 
um, I made it my own company. So I got, got more and more shares. And then we separated the piano business and the audio business. Oh, the audio business is mine. That's it. Well, let, let me just close the door here for a second because people are going for lunch. Broadman no, 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 technology and city sets my stem or I die. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a um a frequency curve for a loudspeaker. The 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 audible spectrum in um in frequency is from 16 hertz. That's the lowest frequency we can hear. And while we're young, we can listen up to 20 kilohertz. The older we get, it will go down. But music is played in this range. So many people understand that music goes up to here, which is technically right. But the, the prime frequency of in instruments are typically between 50 hertz and 2 kilohertz. Uh, a piano, for example, the highest key on a piano, when it, which is really it, 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 is about four kilohertz, four kilohertz and something. So still here. Uh, soprano singer, very high frequency is one kilohertz, not more. But many people, when you when you when they hear a singer, they they think, okay, because of my hearing goes to 20 kilohertz. No, 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 no. It's still one kilohertz. All up here is harmonics. And the harmonics make the difference between uh, this is a piano and this is a trumpet. So that the if we if every instrument just played the, the clean tone, then we could not have any separation in the instruments. They would all sound the same. But because of the harmonics, they sound different. Now the <laughs> problem is here to the lower frequency, the speakers, they have no efficiency. The ideal curve would go like this. Uh, okay. But our speakers have one requirement. They need to be living room friendly. Mm -hmm. So of course you can make a, a, a horn speaker with a huge horn, but uh, maybe your wife will ask you <laughs> not to put it at home. So we have to build speakers and that's, all, our, all the manufacturers, we have to build speakers that are living room friendly. So in the cabinet, we try to find a way to get a good deep bass by still using a small cabinet. So what is the best compromise? And you can make a, um, a bass reflex system, but then you get here one frequency peak, right? With the bass reflex. Now you need to cut this peak because it's too big. And what you do is you fill the speaker with damping material to damp that. Two problems. Low frequencies, damping material does not work good. Damping material works much better at higher frequencies. So you have a problem here. And second, it makes the speaker low, slow. So Hans thought, can I make it different? Now I come back to the slit in the door. Uh, imagine this, we have the door wide open. Music plays inside the room. I stand outside. I hear all the music. When somebody closes the door to a narrow slit, what will happen? Just a simple drawing. You have the door here, like this. And here, here is the music. Then the, 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 the sound waves will come out like this. But only the, high, the lower frequencies, the higher frequencies will be bouncing inside the room. They will not find the door. Uh, we can go into detail, but acoustics, why this is, but lower frequencies will find the door and the slit in the door. The more you close the door, the lower the frequencies have to come to become so that they will still come outside. So in a way that the slit in the door is a natural low pass filter. And the slope of the filter is 4.5 dB, okay? So the more I close the door, the lower is my crossover frequency. Now, what did Hans do when you look at the speaker design from the, let's say 2000s or earlier? You have a bass speaker, bass driver here. You have a mid range and Tweeter and the cabinet looked like this. So this is a cross section, you see. And what you what you see is here is a slit going in this direction. 
So when this, the driver was swinging inside, you have the energy going this way. What is the difference? Because of the slit and the calculation of the slit, frequencies smaller than 130 hertz uh, will go out. The lower you go, the more is the volume that you get. Above 130 hertz, nothing comes out. Now, what is it here? If we have, let's say, this is 130 hertz, then if we go a, at 130 hertz, we add a little bit. Let me take another color. We, we add a little bit. We add here more because the lower we go, the more we get from in volume from the outside. So what, what we do is we, we get that linear curve. Is that perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it's much better than just having one peak. So we have a linear system. Second, the, system, it, the speaker behind you, uh, if, from the design of the, of the speaker, we always thought, why do we need damping material? This is something also very important for us. Damping material is only there to take something out of the signal that you do not want. If you do not produce anything that you do not want, why damping material? So Hans was thinking about it, and it took him about 10 years to get that done. The first speaker I bought still had damping material, but the design behind you, this speaker is completely empty. There is, if you open it up, if you take the driver out, you will see nothing than air, air from Vienna. <laughs> so nothing is in there because there is nothing to correct. And there are three things that are going together. First, small drivers, because they do not bend. They are very fast. Uh, so small five inch base drivers. Second, the, the form of the cabinet. And third, the crossover as it is built. So these three elements allow us to have an empty speaker. Therefore, there is no damping material. The speaker is super fast and that gives you that natural sound. So, this is called the horn resonator. This is a to, to the existing base system, the, the, the base reflex system and the transmission line system, which are the typically two used in speaker design. Hans Deutsch in 1970 something invented the horn resonator. And from the design, the horn resonator first faced forward, then it got to the side and then we found out that we can even make the horn parallel and the boards that you have on the speaker behind you are, we call them the sound boards, the air between the, the board and the cabinet itself. The cabinet is very stiff and the, the board also. There is exactly four millimeters distance and the slit is on the lower side of the speaker. It's for designed and calculated for every speaker. And the air between the board and the cabinet is acting as a driver. So when you play good bass and you turn up the volume and you, you light the match and you have a little flame, right? And you go over that slit with the flame and you play the music, you will see the flame dancing because of the air being pressed out, okay? So this is the... Uh, what, behind you, you have the third evolution of the horn resonator. This was the original design. You see that uh, we are not thinking in how does a speaker have to look like? We are thinking how does a speaker optimize its sound? The fact that the speakers behind you look very nice for environment are also very much accepted by the women at home. This is a positive accident that came out by the design of the speaker. So having a speaker that's narrow, where you do not see the technology, no big bass driver or so, this is not because we want to make the speaker beautiful. The beauty of the speaker in terms of its visual appearance is nothing else than a consequence out of the acoustic requirements. So acoustic comes first, 
And the fact that the ladies say, oh, this is an elegant speaker. I can have that at home. Thank you very much. But that was not our prime intention. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So the, the, if first comes the function and then comes the beauty. あの、質問をちょっとしてみたい Yes, they are made to a certain length, but uh, there is there is a flexibility. So if you um, for, for us in the factory, as we do it every day, it's easy to handle that. I know that the, for, for some speakers, the cables are relatively short, but uh, don't forget the, 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 um, all the, the crossovers are still handmade by Hans Deutsch, not personally by him, of course, but he has a team of a few people and uh, we are placing the orders and they are building the speakers. So we are getting, uh, sorry, not the speakers, the crossovers. We are getting the crossovers with the cable to the factory and we put them into the speaker connected drivers. Now, if you look into our speakers, you will find that the cables are routed freely. So we do not tack them to the wall of the speaker over a longer distance, but we have them freely. And that really was tested in Hans lab. <laughs> you have to understand that Hans Deutsch is a very special person. Mm -hmm. um, he has uh, um, the ability to do tests and repeat them for a hundred times in one day, working on a, on a naked frame of a speaker. So this is, it, it looks like the frame of a cabinet, but no walls on the front and side. And he was testing how to run the cables and how are they optimized. So, and um, the, the, we found out that having the, the cables running freely gives you a better, more free sound than connecting them to the, uh, to the wall. Why? The wall is always slightly resonating. And um, if you see that we, we put foam elements, so this, the cables are not touching the wall, so they start, do not start rattling. The issue is the longer cables running freely, not touching the body, that's tested. And that's what we'll not, we, we will not change. So when you look inside the speaker, as the cables are hanging freely, it looks like it, the inside is not as perfect as it, uh, and as clean as it could look like. But again, we are not designing for looks. We are designing for sound. So we accept that the, the cables are running freely. It does not look completely optimized. We're not clamping them together like this, making a big strand. This is on purpose. This is on purpose. It's about acoustics. That's why we do it. And Hans is a person, in, when it comes to acoustics, he forgets everything. He starts working three o'clock in the morning and works until 10 o'clock in the evening. And, and nobody of us can do that, but he's so dedicated and that was his whole life. So as a person, he has, he had the ability to develop all these um, things that we have in the speakers, which are behind me, because he's so overpassionate, I would say. Nobody else can do that. Now, he's also calculating and trying with the length. Uh, I think he has tested in his life. Uh, I think the, the number was just the interconnect cables that we have tested between preamplifier and power amplifier. I think it was more than 100 different cables just to find out which is the best. And it is always Hans Deutsch, the, the, the license, the design, the ideas, and now I am in the lucky situation to make that beautiful music alive and sell it all over the world. And now it's my company. And for me, it's a, a passion that I will use until uh, or do until the end of my life uh, together with my son to keep that beauty of music alive. Luckily, I'm I'm healthy, and I, I love I love what I'm able to do.
I really like music. I love listening to music. I like that product. I like uh, all the things I can do. I like to do uh, to to run the company together with my son, which is a very special privilege. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're we're very happy to do that. And I mean, well, uh, the, the my, uh, maybe a question from my side. I'm, I I really would like to help you wherever possible. But let me know. I'm. I'm really. Uh, I would like to wherever I can be of any help to you. By uh, I don't know. I uh, I call myself the the ambassador of of the music that's in our speakers. And that's what I would like to do. Our speakers can do that, that this wow effect that people are totally intrigued by music and get something out they have never heard before. That's my, my message to, to all of us.